Now, when we are talking about internal trade, we need to understand the various documents which are used in internal trade. So, let us understand one by one each of the documents which are used. So, the first one here is a performer invoice. See, this is not a proper invoice. This is a performer, a performer invoice. What is this? This is prepared by the seller when the buyer requests him to do so. What is the reason for preparing? The reason is we provide them the details on the quantity, the grade, the quality of goods, the price and the weight. Okay. It helps the buyer to know the specifications of the product and it also gives the information about the amount that would be required by the buyer to pay to the seller. So remember once the buyer and the seller agree to buy the goods and the seller agrees to sell the goods, if they want they can the seller can send the performer invoice. Now this is not the final invoice, this is just a informational invoice. Okay. Now this is a simple performer invoice which we have. So you can see we have the name of the shipper, customer, then it is already written here that it is a performer invoice. We have the details about the goods which we can write out here. So all this is the way in which this invoice looks like. Now let's see the second one. The second one is the invoice. Now see we learned about the performer invoice. Now let's see what actual invoice is all about. See this is prepared only when the goods would be bought on credit. So once the goods are bought on credit, we would send this to the customer. That is the buyer. Now, he would, we would write down the particulars of the goods which have been sold to the buyer. This is also known as bill or memo and this remember this is prepared after sales. When it comes to performer invoice, it would be prepared before the sales happening but this is done after the sales. Now, this is a invoice. This is a way in which the invoice is prepared and this is a sample which you can see. So, we have all the details and also the declaration by the seller about the goods ok. So we have the date and other details which are generally required by the seller to be presented in the invoice for example the invoice number, the date ok, the payment mode, the payment id, the description of the goods which have been sold, the signature which is required that is the authorized signatory and the amount that is payable. Now, the next one is your debit note. Now, what is a debit note? See, this is a evidence that debit made to account of the party. The debit has been made to account of a particular party and that party would be named in the debit note. Now, this would be prepared when the seller finds the goods are undervalued. Okay, so he has made an invoice and he finds the goods have been undervalued in that. Sometimes it is a purchaser also who would prepare this. So the purchaser will prepare when if he thinks the goods are overvalued or if he has returned some goods or if the seller has allowed a lower discount. So when the goods arrive to him if he thinks they are of a different quality and hence they are overvalued or if he returns the goods does not accept them or if he thinks that the goods needs to be repriced in that scenario he will issue a debit note. Now, what does it show? It shows an indebtedness to supplier is being reduced or that of debtors is increased depending on which condition we are in which condition we are issuing the debit note. So, either the supplier's indebtedness reduce or it increases. Okay. Now, let us see a sample. This is a sample of a debit note. So, we have the name of the person to whom the bill would be made. We need to write the description of the goods the total amount ok and we also sometimes uh, write the obviously we will have to write the date and there is also a debit note number which is being returned ok. You also need to write the bank charges if they are applicable. Now let us see the next one the next is a credit note. Now the obviously it would be opposite to the debit note this is the evidence that the credit has been granted to a data ok. Now, this would be prepared when the customer returns the goods previously invoiced or is allowed for further discount. Okay. Now, amount of debtors indebtedness in this case either is reduced 
or the amount payable to the creditor gets increased okay so this is the credit note let's see a sample now this is a sample of the credit note so we have the details about the goods and we will also write the remaining details which are required how much is the gst applicable what is the credit note number and also the signatory would also sign at below the the credit note now let us see the next document which has been uh, given to us this is a lorry receipt now what is a lorry receipt see this is also known as a known as a goods consignment note what is that this would be issued by a transport company why would they issue this because they are making an acknowledgement that they have received the goods and they are ready to transfer it to the buyer or the consignee the receipt would be issued by the transport company and then handed over to the seller and the con or the consignor once the seller or the consignor receives it he would then transfer it or hand it over to the buyer or the consignor when the goods reaches the place that is the place of buyer the buyer would hand over this particular lorry receipt to the transport owner and only then he will receive the goods now this is a sample of a lorry receipt which has all the details about the freight charges the details of the goods and the re requisite details which are required that is who is the consignor the signatory signatures of the relevant parties now the next comes your railway receipt now obviously as the name suggests this would be prepared by railways the docu this is a document of title which acknowledges just that the goods have been received by them that is the railways and they are this receipt is issued by the transport company that is the railways and handed over to the seller or the consignor who just like the lorry receipt would hand it over to the buyer or the consignee and and when the goods delivery of the goods has to be taken they have to present this particular receipt 